My name is Wendy Coriel. I'm part of the Tyranny Watchers podcast. I'm also the creator of Green Bay Sausage and Worldwide Wendy and Demon. And I'm here today with... Uh, Emmanuel. Uh, as- Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> but you should pronounce I'm, your you, you should pronounce your last name the way that it's supposed to be pronounced Gold, because Goldstein. I always say Goldstein. Goldstein. Go, yes, how, uh, say it again. I, I yeah, want to see if course, I, that's uh, you know um, I I actually published some books and I actually uh, use that as a pseudonym. Obviously, it's not my actual name, but I'm using it on the internet and I'm I'm using it when I publish books. And of course, it comes from 1984. It's you know it's the antagonist of 1984. The, the the enemy of the party whom everyone is uh, taught to hate. Right. Uh, but a lot of people don't get that. And, uh, you know, they, they think I'm Jewish. I'm, I'm not Jewish. But, uh, you know, as, as you can see, <laughs> if anything, I look like a Muslim, at least right now. I'm not a Muslim either. Uh, but actually, you know, uh, I have gotten so much hate from, you know, from from people who, who thought I was Jewish. And, you know, and there was so much anti-Semitism that I had to face that I'm like, uh, you know, that I started to really look into Judaism and and figured, you know, hey, Judaism actually isn't isn't bad at all and isn't like, you know, like uh, these uh, uh, these these evil people on the internet are claiming, you know, because they're portraying it as evil and it isn't even evil at all. So if I if I had to convert to, to a religion for some reason, it would probably be Judaism. Okay. And and of course I'm I'm wearing this attire because uh you know we, we figured we're gonna talk about uh some um occultism and some uh mysticism um kind of you know as a uh, continuation of some of the stuff we talked before, uh, uh, and um, and in an effort to tie these things together. Um, because, uh, and I, I just told you that, you know, I feel that there is a lot of occultism going on, and I have nothing against against that, and I have nothing against paganism, um, but there is a certain type of occultist beliefs that is uh, popular with some people, uh, especially with successful people. Um, and I, I, I feel, uh, I, I, sh- I should try to address that now as, as good as I can. And I started addressing, uh, some of these aspects when I talked about, uh, the communist, uh, uh symbols. And I, I didn't know anything before about that. You know, I was just, you know, I, I was looking at these communist symbols and I was like, what what do they, these symbols mean, right? They have to have a deeper meaning. And and then I noticed that they all have the same meaning. And not just the communist symbols, a lot of other famous symbols all have the same meaning and it's an occult meaning. So um, yeah, so I figured maybe we can talk about that. And okay. you of course have some background in that um, as, as you just you know told me. Uh, that uh, you're actually into Egyptian mythology, which is great because uh, then you're going to know about some of these aspects. Yeah, I I guess some people would look at my views and think that I'm part of the occult. Cultism really is just in in, in the United States. I I, I, want to apologize for using that word. No, 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 you're fine. I'm just for for the audience to try to like... You know, I, to I try didn't to know define. I know a lot of people would look at me, and I'm not saying you, like just people in my own country that are of Christian faith would look at my beliefs and say, oh, she's a cultist, she's a Satan worshiper. But I'm just a peaceful, spiritual pagan, and I chose the Egyptian deities as my deities. My patron deity is Sekhmet, who is the warrior goddess from ancient Egypt. So there's a lot of comedic pagans out there, but regardless of faith like you know some of some of the symbolism some of the things that you're talking about the types of people we're talking about are people with a lot of power and influence right, right. i don't have a lot of power i have a little tiny bit of influence yeah, but not but much that, that's that's not even the only difference right there's but a I, lot, there's a lot of difference you know um you know sometimes when i when i talk uh, uh with, with muslims or when i talk with uh people who think that i'm jewish um, they have like uh, this misconception, especially if it's people that don't know anything about Judaism or Christianity. Uh, you know, I actually have a Muslim friend, and 
and and <laughs> he sings. You know, he showed me he showed me pictures of uh, of a satanic mass. Uh, and be because he thinks that that's what a typical Christian church would look like, you know. And I tried to explain to him that that's not a typical Christian church, and he wouldn't believe me. He'd, he'd be like, "But, but this has all the Christian symbols. Look, it has a cross, it has an altar, and and look at the rituals they're doing. You know, they, uh, 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 uh you know, they, because to him it looked like uh, a Christian rituals. You know, like uh." Um, what do you call this in English? You know, when you when you give uh, uh, the piece of bread and uh, yeah. and you give the wine. Of course, in a satanic mass, they were doing it with blood and uh, some other bodily fluids that I don't want to get into. Ew. And, and of course, the cross was upside down, and you know, it was all satanic, obviously. But to him, you know, uh, he to him, it just looked like a Chris, typical Christian uh, 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 mass. Uh, because uh, he doesn't know that the, the Christian cross is usually supposed to be upright. He doesn't know that uh, you you don't do those rituals with blood. You know, he doesn't know that. And he's been told all because he, he grew up in a uh, Muslim environment, uh, you know, and with some people, you know, who have, uh, who have a lot of prejudice against Christians. So he's been told all along anyway that, uh, essentially, Christians are devil worshippers anyway. So, so now he's convinced that that's what actual Christianity looks like. <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny though, because I, is, I've, uh, I've I've met some Satanists, like some legit devil worshippers, but they are also peaceful people. I mean, there's right, there's a subset right. of people that believe that biblically that God is actually the bad guy and Satan is the good guy. Exactly. So it's not like exactly. they're like, I want to embrace evil. They just see things differently. So exactly. I, I don't know. Everybody's got an opinion about faith. I'm, you know, I, I've got that American spirit, like freedom of religion. I have so many friends from so many different walks of life. But now I, I talked to you a little bit about, about this yesterday with my podcast, Tyranny Watchers, because of the political climate, People think that my entire team is like right wing Christians when I have gotten into religious disputes, legal religious disputes with some of the people on my podcast team. So some of it is just things that I think are elements of control to divide people even more. Divide and conquer tactics. Right, Hate right. this person because they're this. Hate this person because they're that. Exactly, so, you know, exactly. religion has been years for that. You know, religion has been used for that means for years, dividing people. But now we see if you don't believe in getting jabbed, if you do hate each other, if you are different skin color, hate each other. Like, it's ridiculous. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and and that, that's actually a good point. And I, I want to talk about that as well. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the point of, um, you, you know, what I was trying to get at is that, um, when it comes to paganism, you know, uh, a lot of us, um, you know, typically a lot of people don't know, uh, don't know a lot about paganism. So, so to them, they have the same impression, like my Muslim friend, who doesn't know anything about Christianity, you know, to them, it all looks the same, you know, and to, to you know, and of course, there are uh, uh, some occult groups uh, that are into some more darker aspects. Right. Um, but of course, they're not all like that, you know, and then and then like to your typical uh, conservative Christian or whatever, uh, he doesn't know that. You know, so that's why, you know, some people have, you know, maybe even have that prejudice about you and think that you're into some dark stuff when you're not, you know, uh, uh, you, you're just practicing normal uh, uh, paganism, you know, and it's the same difference as with, you know, practicing Christianity or or practicing uh, 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 essentially Satanism. <laughs> yeah, right. you know? Well, um, I don't know. So depending on the, the brand of Satanism, but if we're talking like, even just Christians. So I'm not at all like what I was experiencing is people because of the team that I'm working with, just assuming that I'm a conservative Christian. I'm anything but that. And I don't know, to me, it's just, it's just absolutely ridiculous that 
people would make assumptions about people's faith. And I tried to point out to people that like they were even calling one of the people on my podcast who is a Catholic an evangelicalist, an evangelical Christian. Now, in the United States, most evangelical Christians don't agree with Catholics because they see the Catholics as technically pagans because they're not praying to just one God. They're also praying to the saints and to Mary. And that's supposedly bad and going to make people go to hell. Everybody's got an opinion, but I've said it once before and I'll say it again. Only a fool would claim to know the will of God. I could be wrong in my faith. My friends could be wrong in their faith. Nobody knows for sure. All we can do that, that, is that try is to believe in something if that's the path we want to choose. Right. Right. And I, I think people should respect that, you know. Um, obviously, everyone thinks that whatever he believes is the only truth. But at the very least, you know, they should respect it if 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 other people uh, think the same thing about whatever they believe. Yeah, I... For me, I'm like an agnostic before anything. I don't think I could ever be so daft to say, my truth is the only truth. The exception would be if one of my deities all of a sudden like materialized in front of me and said, hi, I'm God. Then, then I'd be like, well, I have something that might be evidence because I can't prove my beliefs. That's where I, I get kind of like, weirded out when people this is the only way and if you don't believe this you're going to go to a bad place and burn for eternity i don't believe that I, I don't believe that any kind of creator would punish people for not knowing what the truth is when there's no way to really know the truth for sure yeah that's exactly the the the, the kind of conversations i i often have with muslims uh you know like like just um just before we started talking, I was, um, you know, like two hours ago or so, I was talking uh, with a Muslim, and he said uh, that um, that all you have to do is uh, convert to Islam, and you'll go to paradise. And I think that's a bit too easy, isn't it? You know, and I was like, well, suppose I'm like a murderer or something, and then I decide to go, uh, 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 you know, uh, then I decide to to convert to Islam. So I'm I'm gonna go to paradise then. That 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 would be too easy, wouldn't it? Besides, I wouldn't if that's the case. I wouldn't even want to go there because if if that well that that would then mean that your paradise is is full of murderers. Murderers, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So in that in that case, I, I I'd rather go to the Islamic hell because uh, that would maybe you know then that would be filled with uh, you know simply with people who aren't Muslims but not necessarily with objectively bad people, right? <laughs> well, and the, 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 the interesting thing about women, whatever religion says, paradise, heaven, that means different things to different people. Whatever, like, whatever my ideal afterlife would be, I, it, there would be less clouds and a lot more cannabis in my version of heaven. So <laughs> it really depends on the person. Like, maybe... Maybe heaven and hell is like, well, part of me thinks that it's just a tool for control. I do believe in an afterlife, but I don't necessarily believe in a bad one. And I believe that if there is something like a bad place, that maybe you just put somewhere to learn. Now, there might be people like Hitler that do go to a really bad place, but even somebody who like murdered one person, not that murder is good, but it's also not something that can't necessarily be forgiven by the creator. So maybe you're put in some kind of like learning reality. I don't know. There's, there's so many different possibilities. And that's why at my core, I remain agnostic because I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of beliefs, but I do not have all of the answers because there's no way to have them all as a mortal. This is um, this is a, this kind this didn't end up being the topic that we talked about no. discussing, but I like this topic. I think that this flowed <laughs> well. So uh, you you want to you want to go on and talk about that, or, or or should we actually get into the uh, culture? Wow, well, yeah, we can switch gears. I think we got about eh, we probably got about twenty minutes, so I think that we can talk um about some symbols for that. So why don't you? Because you've done a lot more research on this than me. I've looked into the Masonic symbolism because my home city, Green Bay 
you can see the Masonic symbolism right in the logo. There's Mason Street, Mason Manor, Mason everything in Green Bay. So I've dug into a little bit of that, but not so much it, where it would tie into the occult. So I'm interested to learn about you're, this. You're, you're, in, you're, you're into Egyptian mythology. So uh, I don't know what your city looks like, but did you recognize anything? Maybe a pillar? I don't know. Is there a pillar? I should send you a, a copy of the Green Bay logo. You know, like, I, mean, I mean, like, well, not, not just a pillar. Well, obviously, there's probably going to be pillars. But I mean, like an obelisk. I don't think there's anything like that in Green Bay. Like, Green Bay is not a huge city. It's the third okay, largest well, city in I've never been to Green Bay, so I don't know. Maybe, uh, you know, but but since you, you but because you said it, 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 it was, uh, you know, it, it has, like, Mason Street and whatever. Um, uh, you know, every... At least here where I live, every every pretty much every city above uh, one hundred thousand inhabitants uh, has an obelisk. I, I gotta uh, let my cat out. She's be hold on. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought I let her up. I'm sorry about that. Sorry. She like she she kept scratching at the door and meowing, and <laughs> the microphone probably picked all of that up. I'm so sorry. And, you, you probably know all that. <clears throat> of course, the obelisk represents Osiris. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, and then you have a body of water or you have a dome, you know, uh, uh, circular shapes, uh, which represent Isis and her womb. Um, uh, do you, so if we're talking like the of course, obelisk. Of course, the body of water represents the fluid. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. Okay. What, what, about, the, what about the pyramid and... What I interpret as the Eye of Horus on the American and the United States dollar bill on the back of the dollar bill. I well, that's that's not called. A There's like a name for that seal. I have always, uh, but it's 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 probably derived from that. Yes. Okay. I mean, pyramid and an eye hanging above it, like to me, like Eye of Horus. But I've always wondered why is the Eye yeah, of right. Horus looks, or Eye of Ra? Why is that, that exactly what I mean? It looks like Egyptian mythology or. or on the first glance, to someone who doesn't know about Egyptian mythology, um, but if, if if it's someone someone like you who who, who actually practices uh, uh, Egyptian mythology himself, uh, then of course he will recognize that those are not the the actual typical forms you would use. You know, just just like you wouldn't in just just like in Christianity, you wouldn't use a cross upside down. You wouldn't use these uh, symbols in the manner that they used uh, uh, on the dollar bill, for example. You know, that's not how they would have been used in ancient Egypt. I mean, it, it might have been to a degree, because if you think about ancient Egypt. Well, yes, it's it's based or it's derived uh, upon such mythology, but uh, the way it's presented is different. That's what I was trying to get at. Okay, because to me, like any kind, any any eye like that, any single eye, eye of Horus, all-seeing eye. Sometimes the eye of Ra, Egyptian mythology, like Ra's tears are what created all the other deities and humans. So I definitely see some of the symbolism there, but I don't understand why. I see you doing the thing. <laughs> <laughs> They can see you. The Illuminati can see you. <laughs> that's, that's, it's difficult to do the other side when, when you're wearing a monk's robe, but maybe you can see the bit. <laughs> Where did you even get that outfit? I need to know. Oh, that. Well, that's, uh, like I said, you know, I, I told you it was getting late and I was getting ready for bed. So that's like my uh, my pajama. Oh, okay. I, I, thought, I thought it was like, <laughs> I didn't realize it was jammies. What about the hat? Uh, that that's just a normal, um, uh, uh, is, you know, normal Islamic. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Normal Islamic hat. Okay. Um, I, I, admittedly, you know, I'm I'm just using it as my pajamas now. But originally, that was actually a a, a monk's robe. Uh, but I lost, uh, you know, it, it it's supposed to have a hood, right? I lost the hood, so I'm I'm using this instead, <laughs> and I think this is actually much nicer. <laughs> Uh, I, I I never thought I'd start talking to somebody from the other side of the world 
that was as eccentric and <laughs> costume ready as I can be sometimes. So I used to wear a fez a lot, but that was more of a Doctor Who thing. But I also understand that's symbolism that's cool. where that that's came cool. from. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. Sad, I, I I I would love to have one. Sadly, I don't have that. Mm. Well, you probably get, probably find one on Amazon. It wouldn't necessarily be legit. It'd be just some whatever. But yeah, that, no, no, no. It had. It, it would have to be real, though. You know, otherwise it's just yeah. You know. <laughs> so it, one thing that we were talking about, like the the occult and Satanism, and we touched on Freemasons. Now I did manage to get my paws, and I don't have it anymore. I wish I still did, but I had. I got my paws on. Um, it was it was some kind of subset of Masons, but it was like a little one of their little books, and it had basically like upside down pentacles in it which the upside right side up pentacle in pagan sim symbolism you know like the the two side the two points on the side are like the elements so fire water air cannabis i don't know what the, the the elements and then the top is supposed to be spirit flipped over i'm not sure what it's supposed to mean but most people interpret it as you can almost see the shape of a face of a goat in it but so the in the mason books it's all these upside down pentacles. And to me, even though they're talking about God and Jesus and whatever through it, the symbolism was like, wait a minute, this is Satanism. Have you ever dug into that? Like the, you, you know, originally what I wanted to do is make, you know, maybe, maybe one or maybe two or maybe even a couple of videos, long videos, <laughs> like, like, like the first couple of ones I did, you know, starting with the symbolism. And then slowly, um, over, you know, after a lot of explaining and after a lot of, um, uh, you know, examples and, and, you know, concrete examples, um, not say that, but sort of at the end, let uh, the listener come to his own conclusion about that. And I'm not saying that's the case. <clears throat> though, though personally, you know, personally, I don't know. No, actually, let's put it this way. Personally, since I'm not a Christian, uh, well, it's complicated, but <laughs> um, at least at least I'm not, you know, one of one of those evangelical uh, conservative um, uh, American Christians. <laughs> so, so personally, I, I, I don't necessarily have an opinion on that. But if I was, if I was a devout uh, Christian, then it would probably look like Satanism to me. Or at least I could understand how some Christians uh, uh, can uh, arrive at that conclusion, though I'm not necessarily sharing that. I'm not. I don't necessarily have an opinion on that, though. Though there is definitely some dark and occult stuff going on. That's for sure. So when it comes to symbolism, you 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 did your video about the carry carry. And I'm, by the way, I'm not. I'm not talking, well, well, one more thing. I I I'm not necessarily talking about uh, masons here. I'm just you know talking about uh, in general about. Right. Uh, such societies and, and and groups in general, right, right, and and so that's kind of where I was where I was headed with the question I was going to ask you. You know, you're you're you made a video about the uh, Katy Perry video, and to me, it seems like Hollywood is balls deep in whatever we're talking about here, whatever we want to call it, symbolism, occult. I feel like some of the things, some of the more conspiratorial things that we see happening if you look at like mainstream hollywood mainstream music it's almost like there's a lot of symbolism in music videos and in, in movies and sometimes it's almost like they're telling you what they're going to do in hollywood in american music before it happens if that makes any sense at all uh yes yes and that, that was the weirdest thing about klaus schwab for me as well because everything that he's doing now he you know he openly published in his books like like seven years ago 
um, including a lot of the things that people are accusing him of. You know, um, he actually uh, openly advocated for these things all along. You know, because he's a transhumanist. Uh, and so. it's crazy. I had people from Green Bay telling me, there's no global conspiracy. Do, do, do. It's like, did you guys sit through all of Davos 2021? And like you're saying, I haven't even read his books, but there's, it's like right out in the open. It's right in front of people's faces, but nope, it's not real. It's not real. You're just, you're just a tinfoil hatter. No, no, I'm seeing what's in front of my, my eyes. I can see with my own eyes. Why can't other people see this? Right, and I, I think that's actually one of the reasons why you have a lot of these kinds of symbols in in Hollywood and, 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 and even in big cities. And, you know, they're, they're always featured very prominently. And, uh, and of course, you know, in a lot of cases, you know, maybe it's just copycats and it might not even be genuine. But at, at the end of the day, you you have a lot of, of, of that symbolism and it's all over the place. And obviously someone wants it to be like that. And why do they? You know, you'd think, right, that if there really was some some kind of conspiracy or whatever, uh, you'd think they wanted wanted that, that to be secret. So why why do they plaster their symbols all over the place? Uh, and why do they even openly talk about what they're going to do in like five years or so? Um, because if it's all over the place, and we talked about it, that 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 flat Earth effect that we talked about, you know, because when someone, uh, even you know, suppose there really is like a global conspiracy or whatever, um, even if they try to hide it, you know, eventually, if it's like on a big scale. Uh, eventually, of course, something is gonna um, uh, gonna be revealed about it. You know, you, you eventually you have uh, some whistleblower or whatever. You know, so they can't really avoid, no matter how secret they try to be, uh, they can't really avoid some information getting out. So, um, so, so then, of course, you know, the 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 other way to deal with that is to get, go the complete other way and plaster your symbols all over the place so that obviously people are going to see it. But normally people aren't going to connect the dots, you know. But if someone does connect the dots, uh, he'd realize, oh, wait a minute, these symbols are everywhere. They're, they're, in, they're in Hollywood, they're in all my movies, they're in all, all my music. They're, 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 when I walk down the street, uh, they're there, you know, they're in the city I live. Uh, and, and and all the people I know uh, maybe, you know, maybe have rings like that or using symbols like that. And suddenly you see, see that kind of stuff everywhere. You see it everywhere. And then you go crazy and you go like, oh, conspiracy, thing for that. Ah, aliens, ah. You know, you know, that's that's the effect because you, you suddenly start to see that everywhere. And I think that's probably exactly what they're going for, you know, giving you the impression that they're everywhere and controlling everything so that you go completely crazy and uh, on, on, and so that no one is going to take you serious. So do you think that some of the announcing, like the World Economic Forum isn't really being secretive, Klaus Schwab isn't being secretive, Hollywood isn't being secretive, but do you think some of their loud and having it out in the open is to trick people? Like, we have all this power, but really they don't because the power is within the people. Although maybe it's not after I what I saw ha is happening in Canada right now. Police beating like it, protesters it looks, down. Like, if, if, if you know what to look for, then it looks like this stuff is everywhere. But, of course, in reality, it isn't. It's not like, it's, it's not, you know, it's, I, I don't, I don't. How shall I put this? Um, it, it's not as as many people as you you might think, and it's not it's not such uh, an extreme global conspiracy as 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 you might get the impression. You know, like I said, I think they want you to get that impression. Uh, one reason is, of course, to intimidate people, and the other reason is, of course, you know, to to have People have that uh, um, flat, uh, tinfoil hat 
effect where they where they think uh, you know that everyone is against them. I mean, <laughs> they, may, may, they, maybe that's a part of it, but there's a part of me. So I follow city politics in Green Bay very closely, and that green agenda. I did a remix video where a, a compilation of people repeating the word green agenda, green agenda, green agenda, green agenda. Green agenda or I'm sorry, green infrastructure, that was it, green infrastructure. And then in watching the meeting, I find out that it's not like just, it's not that the city of Green Bay is just like, okay, we're going to jump on board with this. They're getting pressure from the federal government, who I'm sure the federal government is getting pressure from somewhere like the UN or the World Economic Forum. So it is, in a sense, bigger than people would imagine. It's just that a lot of the pawns, a lot of the players don't know what they're even a part of. They don't even know they're, that they're, they're not, supporting they're not even this agenda. They're not necessarily all part of it. Uh, you, you know how this works, right? You're familiar with Skull and Bones, you know? Skull yeah. and, a lot of people think, oh yeah, Skull and Bones, global conspiracy. Uh, no, you know, you know how many members Skull and Bones has? Every year they have 15 members. 15, 15, you know, 10, 5, 15, not, not 50. Every year, they have 15 members globally, you know? Oh, really? So it's, it's a very small organization. It's very, very small. But you, you, do, you probably also know that you can't join Skull and Bones. You cannot they, join Skull and Bones. They, they approach you, right? Inv invitation only. They approach you because, you know, uh, you made a name for yourself or whatever, you know, they, for some reason uh, you got their attention Then they will approach you and they, they will just, you know, ask you, you know, they, they won't even, you know, in most cases they won't even ask you a real sentence. It's just say skull and bones, yes or no. And then you can just say yes or no. Wasn't that, didn't That's that not, start not, and isn't it still like part of Harvard? Information. They're not giving you any information. They just ask you yes or no, and they approach you and they pick you beforehand. So you cannot join yourself. You have no influence over whether or not you'll be chosen. You know, uh, and of course they're gonna choose the people that they want. You know, they're gonna think, oh yeah, we, we need like because obviously, you know, uh, you, you know that. You know, um, uh, you know, pretty much all the Skull and Bones member members are are, are well, they're. They're very successful, you know. Maybe they're businessmen, or they're they're uh, they're famous people, or they're politicians. The Bush family you know, uh, in various Sean fields, but in 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 all kinds of fields. But in every field that they're in, they're always very successful. And of course, that's not by coincidence either, because obviously they're they're gonna help each other, and you know, and obviously they're also choosing these people. They think, oh yeah, maybe you know, we need a, we need a guy in in such and such position. And then they're going to look for a guy like that, and then they approach him and they invite him. And that's how they can um, fill all kinds of key positions, all the positions that they want to fill, they can fill even with, uh, even while having only very few members. Because doesn't you know, they, they doesn't pick it? and choose and, 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 and put their people in all the position they want uh, uh, their people to be in. And of course, all these positions are leadership positions. So you only need a very few people in, in some key leadership positions and then all the other people that are below them in their in their uh, in their company or, you know, whatever field it may be. You know, these people don't have to be members at all. You know, they 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 have to do what the boss tells them. Right. And it's um, the same. In, you know, a lot of yeah, right. Right. So these 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 politicians that you're complaining about. They, they might not be any members of anything at all. It's just that, you know, their boss is a member and tells them, hey, you know, we have this agenda and this is going to happen. And he's obviously he's not even going to explain that to them. He's just going to tell them, hey, that's that's what we're going to do. I guess that makes sense. Doesn't Skull and Bones like I thought that was like a Harvard thing. It starts at Harvard. Right. I thought it, people no, not, they were in not college. Harvard. No, not not it's Harvard. Not. Not a place. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, not Harvard. Now you you confused me with Harvard. Uh, oh, not Harvard. But it was so, like there's something I'd have to look it up. But I it's, thought it was it's some like three letter thing. What's it called? I'm not I'm not very familiar with American universities. Okay. Um, it's that other place, not Harvard. Uh, okay. What's the other place? It's not Yale, but right. It's Yale. It is. Yes, it's Yale. 
Okay. Really? Yes. Now that you say it, it's Yale. I know it's Yale. It's just I'm not familiar with American terminology and American okay. universities, but I know it's Yale. All right. Yeah, I just I just remembered. I didn't remember what institution. It's been a it's been a while since I dived into Skull and Bones, like probably like 2007 is when I started researching that. So, yeah, I I think that uh, well, I think we're about out of time. We wanted to stick to about a half hour. I think we're a little bit over that right now. We are. So is there any any last thoughts that you want to draw out there? Um, hmm. Well, you know, we <laughs> typically, you know, it's, it's always uh, when you talk about these things, you know, you, you talk about it the way that we've, we've been talking about it now. But actually, that's not what I wanted to do. Actually, I wanted to go about it the other way. Uh, first, talk about uh, uh, the, the, the occult uh, 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 elements and mystic elements behind it, and then come back to how that affects society. I think as we go forward and record these, as long as you're on board for doing this once a week, I think we'll 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 improve in our direction and whatever. And today was kind of weird day because it's really late there in Germany. You're probably tired as f. No, it's it's and fine. And I'm worn out from everything. So it's fine. I'm I'm in bad I'm in bad now. As long you know, <laughs> when I when I'm when I'm um when I'm sitting at my desk, I get really tired. But as soon as I'm in bed. I'm, uh, you know, even if I'm not sleeping and even, even if I'm sitting, I'm, I'm not, I'm suddenly not that tired. It's kind of weird. <laughs> but I, like I said, I think that we'll get better. And as we move forward, we can try to plan a little bit better. So maybe like we can start touching base in the middle of the week and pick our topic and maybe even have an outline. Like I want to make sure that I cover this, this, and this, and I'll just probably roll along with it, whatever, unless I'm picking a topic idea. I'm just, I'm just happy to do this. To me, some of this is to kind of show people that those that entertain conspiracy, and I don't want to call them theories, conspiracy things, are not out of touch with reality. And just that throughout all of the restrictions and all the tyranny that we're seeing globally, people are connecting globally. We, the people across the world, are connecting globally. I think that that's important, that there's a global movement for freedom. So that's part of the reason I'm doing this, too. Like, it's not just America, Amen. everybody. There's other people in the world. Amen. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to I'm going to end it there. So uh, we'll have something for you next week. Thanks for watching us. OK, I'm going to stop recording.